Stanley and Brisbane are locked. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Channel 10's live coverage of the Ascot Vale Stakes and Craig Lee Stakes. Two magnificent races which is sure to have a big bearing on this year's Melbourne Cup Carnival. The Ascot Vale Stakes is race number four, it's only about ten minutes away, we'll check the totes. Canny Lad, last season's champion two-year-old, is the short price favourite at $1.10. Our Horizon 1660, The Greeter, $10.35. Manitou 7.15, Mahasan 4.25, a big tip on track for her, as well as for Bureaucracy, the Sydney Colt 2.95, Storé at 4.30, Marvellous 24, North Star Command 16.95 and 3.55, 10 is Trustful 22.80, Orange Ruffy at 6.25, well in commission, and Claire's Girl down the bottom at $17.35. Magnificent day, perfect conditions, not a cloud in the sky, and the track rating is perfect as well. It's good. Full credit to the... Uh, Flemington Curators. Now it's time to introduce Peter Donegan, who is down in the mounting yard as the horses parade for the big one, the Ascot Vale Stakes. Pete. Thank you, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this delightful scene here in the mounting yard at Flemington. Graham Kelly is with me, Graham, and the weather couldn't be any better at all. No, certainly couldn't be better, Peter, and it's a great day's racing with the Ascot Vale coming up in a few minutes, and that's going to be a crackerjack race. And, of course, followed by the Craigley Stakes, and we'll be showing both races live here on 10 Sports Action, so I hope you can stay with us here at Flemington. We'll take a look at the runners in the mounting yard now. Prior to the running of the first of the big races, the Ascot Vale Stakes over 1,200 metres with 251,000 and there's a section of the big crowd building up here at Flemington as the candidates arrive in the mounting yard for the running of this fourth event. And the, the uh, number one saddlecloth here to be carried by Canny Ladd, who proved himself the outstanding two-year-old of last year. Canny Ladd, what a magnificent horse he is. He probably should be unbeaten, most unlucky in the Blue Diamond Stakes at his only defeat. And then, of course, at his last start, he won the Golden Slipper. That was back on the 7th of April. The horse has had two trials since then, one at Geelong, one at Flemington. As you can see on the screen, he looks a very, very fit race horse. He won't lack anything in horsemanship with Shane Dye aboard, and Canny Ladd is certainly the one to beat. Graham, number two, our horizon. With Neville Wilson in the saddle, comes into the ring late and looks very well. Has won uh, six with a second from eight starts. Having his first start for new trainer Bob Hoist today, he looks very well. Bob is confident that... Uh, our Horizon will be leading past the clock tower, but he says from there on is the, is the testing material for Our Horizon. But he's certain to run a bold race. Another stylish looker is number three, the Guida, and to be ridden by apprentice Simon Price, who has a big task here in the big race. And this horse has been uh, quite impressive in his three, uh, five outings. He's had three wins. His last start, he ran fourth up at Eagle Farm, but apparently did very well up in Brisbane, and he's certain to be amongst the chances here. And number four is Manitou with Simon Marshall in the saddle. He's given a very good chance by good judges in the race. He uh, won the Adelaide Millions back in the spring, in the autumn and uh, resumed with a brilliant win at Caulfield last week. He comes into the well, race well. He's been improved by the run and he looks very well, Manitou. A good chance. Right, Manitou not quite in the mounting yard as yet, but uh, we'll have a look at him as he goes to the barrier. Down to number five, Mahasan, and Michael Clark is the rider. Here's the filly, which won the Blue Diamond Stakes. She's got plenty of class, and her last win at Sandown was really outstanding first up. She got a couple of checks in that race, but knuckled down to her task brilliantly over the last 100 metres to win by half a length. Mahasan... Well, as I said, she's all class. $4.05 on the Victorian Tote after opening at $4.20 and definitely amongst the leading contenders. Um, one rated the biggest threat to Canny Ladders, number six, Bureaucracy, with Mick Dittman in the saddle. He has three wins in a second from his five starts. Scored brilliantly last week at Randwick, running 1.9.9 for 1,200 metres, beating with me. It was a top-class effort. He's settled in well since he's been in Melbourne, and Bureaucracy is certainly going to run a bold race, and he's very tight in betting with the bookmakers. The Perth Colts to Raya number seven. There you see it in the pink with the black stripes, and Greg Hall takes the ride here. He's been most impressive over in Perth. He's had four starts for three wins, was beaten at his first outing, but then he's won his next three on the trot. Two at Belmont and then one at Mooney Valley where he defeated Papa San by two and three quarter lengths and looked as though he had uh, plenty in reserve. Storay has drawn barrier number 10, which is probably a good thing here over the straight 1,200 metres. You don't want to be drawn in and get uh, uh, shuffled back along the fence. And I think Storay 
will be in the clear. And once again, in a very open race, he's got a top chance. At number eight is Marbleres with Gary Willits in the saddle. Came over from Western Australia with quite a reasonable record, but then was most impressive in winning at Sandown uh, two weeks ago. He carried uh, 52 and a half on that occasion. Goes up to 54 and a half today against stronger company, but Marbelius must certainly have a good chance in the race. Before we get on to North Star Command, let's take a look at Manitour, and you wouldn't see a better looking racehorse than this fellow. He's really blossomed from his two-year-old days, and he's a big barreled horse up front, as you can see. He races bandaged up on his uh, front legs, but he looks very, very well. He's looked in peak condition after his last start, and uh, he's... Interestingly, a... Peter, he's improved since last week. You know, he looks a lot better this week than he did even last week, and uh, he's certainly going to run a bold race. All right, let's get on to North Star Command number nine with Gary Clark in the saddle. This horse ran fifth at Mooney Valley at its last start behind Storaya. Its last win was here at Flemington on the 17th of February, and I think North Star Command will probably find this field just a little too hot. I think that also applies to number 10, Trustful, who will be ridden by Darren Gauchy. Um, his form is reasonable with a win in three seconds from his five starts, but he hasn't run since uh, being well beaten in the Todman's Slipper Stakes in, uh, in uh, Sydney back in the autumn. He's worked well for David Hayes, but as uh, Peter said about North Star Command, I think this will be a bit rich for Trustful. Well, one horse that is at pretty good odds here is Orange Ruffy number 11. Now, this gelding has only had three starts, and he's won the three of them. His last start was outstanding at Sandown, over a 1,000 metres. He missed the start probably a length and a half, and it's very few horses that are able to miss the start over the Sandown 1,000 and still win. He beat Papa Santa half head. He was going to be beaten for sure at the 100 metre mark, but he found plenty. He's a big, flashy chestnut gelding, and I think Orange Ruffy at the odds has got a very good each way chance. And number 12, Claire's Girl, will be ridden by Paul Didham. She comes in well under the uh, set weight scale for this race with only 50 kilos, getting weight from every other runner. Her recent form is quite reasonable with a win at Caulfield and then a second to Ma Hassan at uh, Sandown. She was just beaten on that occasion. And Claire's Girl could be one for uh, anyone looking for Ruffy for their trifectas. OK, to wrap it up, Graham, can you see anything beating Canny Lad? No, I think Canny Lad will win. Uh, he just needs a little bit of luck to get out from Barrier 2. Uh, I think once he does, as uh, long as he does that, he'll win. But I'm giving... Number four, Manitou, a great chance. Well, I've gone the same way. Canny lad to beat Manitou and Orange Ruffy, number 11, with a good each-way chance. Candidates on their way to the stalls now for the first of the feature races. Dan, the Ascot Vale Stakes over 1,200 metres. Pete, Pete, it's going to be an absolute ripper, and uh, what a marvellous bunch of racehorses. I don't think I've ever seen a better-looking uh, and fitter bunch than uh, some of these horses. And the race is really won by only the best. If we, as we have a look uh, back through the years, Vane in 1969 carried a, a big weight to score, surround the champion filly of 1976. Rancher won in 82, Campaign King won in 1985, and the prize money then was only worth $40,000. Last year, Courts are brilliantly won. Of course, two years ago, Zedidif and Star watching that stirring duel to the finish. So it's a race that only the good horses win, but by the same token, there have been a couple of upsets. Zephyr Cross four years ago was at 100 to one, and uh, about uh, 12 years ago, we saw Bally Red win at pretty big odds and upset guns away. Runners are going to the starting stalls for the Ascot Vale Stakes. The favourite is Canny Ladd, and he's always been a very firm and short price favourite, although not in the red. Most people feel his main difficulty will be from barrier number two, probably get pocketed early, and when he's called upon for a run, might be able to get out because there is a very speedy bunch of horses engaged here, including Stor Raya and also Our Horizon, which is going to go very quick as well. Pete Rod Johnson is the secretary of Flemington or VRC and uh, Peter you have to be wrapped with A the weather today and B the track condition itself. Well Dan uh, they've certainly turned on the beautiful weather they say uh, Rod Spring is here the sky is going to be blue and it certainly is today. Well that's right I got down on two knees last night instead of the usual one and uh, here it is beautiful. Looks like a good crowd too. Yeah, Flemington at its best, and it all goes well for the spring carnival coming up. Well, there's something about this place really over springtime, isn't it? When you see the, the flowers out and the big crowds getting here and the good horses racing, it's uh, a place all of its own, Flemington. Yes, well, when you stepped onto the uh, track this morning, as I did, uh, there's a buzz about the place. Uh, people are starting to talk about various horses and uh, this race coming up now and the Craig Lee Stakes, where well, we're really into the big stuff. Rod, I know everyone likes to wrap their track staff, but the track staff here have done a marvellous job to make it a good track for today's big program. Well, it is. It's uh, one of the greatest uh, race courses in the world, and I think that the staff appreciate that, and uh, we're very lucky to have such a dedicated staff, and it's a big team effort, and it works well. 
preparations uh, going on as we speak for the Melbourne Cup, of course, the Carnival? Yes, everything's uh, going along very well. We'll probably have some uh, important announcements as we go along, but uh, we'll keep the public informed of uh, everything that's going to happen and we'll all have a very great time together. And all we have to do is back a winner. That's right. Well, that's uh, up to a lot of others probably, uh, but they're not easy to pick, but... Uh, They'd have, or every horse has got a chance at Flemington. All right, Rod, thanks for your time and uh, the best of luck for the rest of today's meeting and, of course, the upcoming Melbourne Cup Carnival. Thanks, Peter. Thank Rod you. Johnson, the BRC Secretary, joining us here. Candidates uh, arriving at the stalls now. Dan, let's take a look at the latest tight figures on the Ascot Vale. Yes, Pete, Canny Lads at $1.20 on the Victorian tote. Bookmakers are betting better, though. Our Horizon, $11.95. The Guida, $9.95. Manitou, $7.30. All those three horses are at good double-figure odds in the ring. Mahasan at $3.90. Bureaucracy's been the best-backed horse uh, to beat Canny Lad. Clear second favourite, $2.55 on the tote. Storea at $4.25 has also had good support and under that value on track. Marvellous 40 to 1 chance tote odds. North Star Command at $17.20. It's number nine. Trustful at $21.05. Orange Ruffy $7.55. It's kept pretty safe. It is unbeaten. The only horse in the race to remain unbeaten. And Claire's Girl, $20.75. Even, uh, even she's got a chance. If you give Mahasan a chance, she as well has got to be one of the main dangers in this race. And the horses are filling the stalls for the Ascot Vale. A group two event. $251,000 in prize money, of which $162,500 plus a $1,000 trophy will go to the winner. Will it be Kenny Ladd? Or will there be a new three-year-old to dominate the racing through the spring? Kenny Ladd has drawn barrier number two. Marvellous, one of two Western Australian horses, drawn one. Storea going up, and uh, most of them are set. Now, Trustful and Orange Ruffy on the outside, they're all set. Lights on for the Ascot Vale. Racing now, Canny Lad jumped only fairly. Marvellous jumped away nicely, and Manitou going fast early with Storea wide out. And getting across quick from the wide alley was Orange Ruffy. As they run up towards the 900 metres point, Our Horizon's going to cross in front of them all. Our Horizon, with a great burst of speed, gets over to the fence and leads a length and a half to Mahasan. Manitou bureaucracy followed by Storea. Orange Ruffy was caught out wider. They were followed over on the inside by Claire's girl. Canny Lad's back in about eighth placing. North Star Command was behind him, and they were followed by Trustful and the Guida. Over the crossing they go with 600 metres to go, and Our Horizon led a half a length. Mahasan second, Bureaucracy three away from the rail. Orange Ruffy, the widest runner. They were followed by Storea, Clears, Girl, Manitou, Marvellous over on the fence. Canny Lads in the clear, but spotting them five lengths. Then the Guida, North Star Command and Trustful. 300 metres to go, Bureaucracy went to the front of the Ascot Vale. Storea out after it. Here's Canny Lad down the outside from Clears, Girl. Bureaucracy a length and a half in front. Storea wearing it down, two lengths away. Canny Lad, I don't think he can win. Bureaucracy in front, Storea trying hard. Bureaucracy hanging on. Storea won't get it. Bureaucracy wins the Ascot Vale a half length. Second Storea, three lengths away. Canny Lad, the Guida running on strongly at the finish. Then Clears Girl, Marvellous Orange Ruffy, Mahasa, North Star Command, Trustful. Our Horizon and Manitou was back at the tail. And they went very, very quick in that. 1.9.1 was the time. Scintillating time and the race taken out by the brilliant Colt from Sydney, Bureaucracy, written by Mick Dittman. Number six is the winner of the Ascot Vale Stakes Bureaucracy. Mick Dittman has defeated a gallant store and number seven, Greg Hall. And Canny Ladd was well back in third placing, number one. Six, seven and one. Canny Ladd got out in plenty of time, but uh, he just wasn't slick enough on the day for Bureaucracy and store which really have uh, run the favourite off its legs. Bureaucracy first, number six from number seven, Storea, and number one, Canny Lad. Bureaucracy, a brilliant horse from Sydney, trained by Jack Denham. Got that break at about the 300 metre point. Our horizon went very quick early with Mahasan, but Bureaucracy maintained that tempo, and Storea looked a big danger at the 200, but Mick Dittman, with punishing riding, has got Bureaucracy to the post. Storea, inch by inch, was making up a little bit of ground, but Bureaucracy was holding it. And Canny Lad's about two and a half, three lengths away, third. And uh, just getting there, in fact, in front of Claire's girl and the Guida, which ran on very strongly. He's going to be the horse to watch for the Caulfield Guineas and the VRC Derby. 
We'll, uh, we'll cross down to uh, Graham Kelly in the mounting yard, who is uh, with one of the connections of uh, the winning horse uh, bureaucracy. In fact, the one of the part owners, Harry Lawton. Harry, congratulations on another big race win at Flemington. Thanks, Graham. It's a great feeling. There's nothing like winning at Flemington. Flemington's got the atmosphere, tradition. It's the best race course in the world. Of course, you won the Melbourne Cup with Kenzo. How does this feel by comparison? Well, this feels just as good, but a bit better because I own a part of this one as well, so it's great. Harry, you've uh, had a great record syndicating horses. How much did this uh, fellow cost you? He cost me $30,000 in New Zealand. It only goes to prove you don't have to pay these enormous, ridiculous prices to get good horses. Just get good, sound horses, which I always get, and uh, you've got a good chance. There was a brilliant win, 1.9.1 for the 1,200 metres. What's next for him? Look, I don't know. I mean, Jack Denham's a man of few words, but, you know... What he says is right, so I just leave it to Jack to talk to him about it. And would he be looking for 1,600 metre races like the Caulfield Guineas? Well, this horse is out of an Oncidium mare, and the second dam's an Agricola mare. I think he'll run 2,000. You know, I'd be surprised if he's a Cox Plate horse. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, he's more than just a sprinter, believe me. Good. Well, congratulations, Harry. A great win, and uh, another great credit to you for picking him out. Thanks, Graham. Thanks very much. OK? Thank you. Graham Kelly with Harry Lawton. If Harry's right, we've got uh, a lot to look forward to with his fellow bureaucracy. First start in Victoria, perfect record. The interim dividends on the Ascot Vale Stakes bureaucracy $2.35 and 90 cents, which was good odds compared to the bookmakers. Storea $1.20, Canny Lad 75 cents, Quinella $8.40. The trifecta will be $54.30, $54.30 for the trifecta, and the race to race double will be $34.95. So it's six. Seven and one on the Ascot Vale. There's bureaucracy and Mick Dittman coming back to scale. We'll take a break, come back live to Flemington. Welcome back to Flemington. You've just seen a potential superstar of the spring by the name of Bureaucracy, ridden by Mick Dittman, trained by Jack Demmer. And uh, it blew its rivals away in the Ascot Vale Stakes, which included the champion two-year-old of last year, Canny Lad. We'll have a look at the uh, result and dividend on the Ascot Vale. The winner, Bureaucracy, uh, will pay $2.35. The uh, tapes will be up on the screen in a moment. Two thirty-five would be the approximate dividend. We'll check those very, very shortly. The... Uh, Fifth event is the Craigley, which is actually the feature event today because it's worth $301,000. The Craigley, 301, Ascot Vale, 251. So Destin, $2.40 on the opening call. Last year's Melbourne Cup winner, 1280, terrific. 240 for Kings High. All Ashore, $8.25. Mick Dittman rides it for his wife. Nairizzi, 38. Aquidity, $20.10. Pago Mystery, 505. Go Pack 765, Grey Filet of former New Zealander trained by David Hayes at Big Odds. It's number nine. Over the page to Kingston Rule. Horse, I think, will go very, very well today. 375 and a dollar. Kyrau lad another Kiwi, 90 to 1. Zabiel at 240, equal favourite. It is Stella 660, double gin 40 to 1. Big Odds the bottom two. Frontier Boy and our Sacrosanct. So, uh, Bureaucracy, the winner of the Ascot Vale Stakes, and I think the presentation's just about to get underway, so we'll be crossing down to the mounting yard very shortly. Bureaucracy defeated Storreya, and third in was Canny Lad. The big run in the race, though, I thought, was certainly by the Guida. It's ended up running fifth. The Grey was flashing home at the end, and keep an eye on him for races like the Caulfield Guineas, maybe even the Cox Plate, and certainly the VRC Derby. There's the winner, Bureaucracy. He's by Lord Balliner out of Talladol. Lord Balliner's never really had the progeny uh, of this stand but uh, this horse is obviously one out of the box. Harry Lawton said he bought it for $30,000 and want to buy it looks now. The horse has won over $250,000 in prize money. Presentation's about to get underway. It's now time to introduce Mr Andrew Ramsden. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we've just witnessed the fastest ever run Ascot Vale Stakes. And if you look at your page before the race, you'll see a great team of champions and he's run faster time on our good track today. I think you will go on to bigger and better things. Mick Dittman, of course, master jockey, ran a, wrote a wonderful race. I'm sure Harry Lawton, the manager of the syndicate, will be very pleased to say how well he did so too. Harry Lawton. Uh, members of the VRC, ladies and gentlemen, I don't quite know what to say, but uh, I'd like to pay a tribute to Jack Denham. In Sydney, Jack's got a reputation for not talking to the press, talking on radio. They call him Jovial Jack. 
Uh, the one, one scribe told me they didn't even speak to his wife, but uh, he's got a son here, Alan, somewhere, so he must have spoke to her one way along the line somewhere. But I'll, I'll tell you something about Jack. If you're ever in New York or London and you've got a horse with Jack, never be scared to ring him up because a phone call will cost you nothing, about 50 cents. It'll be either yes, no, or next Saturday. That's, that's all it'll be. There'll be no long conversation, so don't worry about the cost of a phone call. Uh, I'd also like to pay a tribute to uh, Mick Dittman. It was Mick who rang Jack last Sunday and suggested that this horse could be the best in the land, a three-year-old. Starting this race, it was ideal. And Mick, uh, Mick's a bit different from Jack. He's exactly the opposite. He can talk a bit. But anyhow, he talked Jack into entering him for the race, and uh, this is the result. All I can say about Mick is uh, I'd like to be on Mick's side in a, in a hearing in the steward's room in a protest. I think he'd win. Uh, what else can I say? Or oh, the only other thing I would like to say uh, is nothing like winning a race at Flemington. I've been to quite a few courses around the world. One race is all over Australia. But the thrill and buzz of winning at Flemington is sensational. It's got the atmosphere here. They've got the, uh, the whole thing here, the heritage. Everything's here. Flemington is the best course in Australia. And to win here is very special. And I do the wish to the VRC every success in the coming Spring Carnival. Thanks very much. Harry Lawton there. I think Harry can talk a little bit as well, but I don't blame him. If I had a horse like Bureaucracy, I wouldn't stop either. Congratulations, Harry, and the connections of uh, Bureaucracy. We look uh, very much forward to watching him throughout the spring and no doubt be here on Melbourne Cup Week, which Channel 10 will cover live. We'll take a break and uh, we'll come back very shortly with uh, the Craigley Stakes, which is not all that far away. Channel 10 brings you the best in sport with Rugby League's final series at the special time of Sunday, 6 o'clock. Hot favourites Canberra take on Improvers Penrith for a spot in the grand final. This is Penrith's best chance for a decade, but can they overcome the 1989 champions? Catch Rugby League at its finest. All the action and the best tries. The major semi-final between Canberra and Penrith, Sunday at 6, following the 10 evening news with Bell Walden at 5.30. This year. Welcome back to Flemington. We'll check the result of the Ascot Vale Stakes. Bureaucracy blew his rivals off the track. 2.35 and uh, 90 cents for the place. Good place, dividend. $1.20 for Store Reyes. 75 for Canny Lad. 8.40 Quinella. 54.30 the trifecta. Race to race double was $34.95. The uh, Craigley Stakes, $300,000 race is coming up very shortly. Three equal favourites uh, open up on the tote. Kings High, Sedestin, and also Zabil. Sedestin's at 2.40. Kings High still at 2.40. 8.25, all ashore. Mick Dittman going for the big feature double. Pago Mystery, 5.05. Go Pack, 7.65. Over the page to Kingston Rule, who is at 3.75. Zabil still at $2.40. Interstellar is the main other chance at 6.60. And Double Gin, surprisingly, at very, very big odds. Now, uh, Graeme Kelly's in the mounting out with the winning jockey, Mick Dittman. I'm sure he'd be full of praise because the time, Graeme, that that horse has run is just sensational. So it will be interesting to see what he does have to say about this colt. Well, Mick, that's a great way to start the spring. You've bounced back in splendid fashion in Melbourne. Yes, well, it's easy when you're on good horses, Grant. <laughs> and you were saying you felt that bureaucracy had the Ascot Vale one about 800 metres from home. Yes, well, he, uh, he pinged out the gates good and, uh, you know, he was always just outside the leader, not far away. It's, he travelled so well. I was very confident in the run on him. And he had a beautiful position, fourth, just uh, one out and one back, as they say, in the trotting parlance. Yeah, lovely clear run, and he was able to go when I was want wanting to go. And, you know, I thought for a moment that the second horse was going to make a race of it or pick him up, but uh, he showed a lot of determination. He found a lot, didn't he, in the last mm. uh, 100 metres, or passed from the clock tower home. Very impressive, you know. He's, and there uh, we can see you, Mick. He's in the front there, and there's Storaya coming out after you in the pink colours. Yes, well, he uh, tailed me up, Storaya, and... Uh, you know, they beat the third horse uh, quite convincingly. It's run very good time, so it was a impressive effort from the two first and second horse. Now only had six runs bureaucracy, so it's a bright future for him. I would think so. Uh, he can only improve. He's learning all the time, and he doesn't, la doesn't lack any class. Although you're keeping at him, he had the race uh, within his grasp coming down to the post, didn't he? Yes, I kept at him uh, because, as I say, the second horse didn't make a very good race of it, but, uh, you know, he showed a lot of courage. And now you go on to all ashore uh, in the next race. That, yeah. That'll be an interesting ride for you. Yes, well, he uh, seems to have done everything right, but he's in a good race today, and, um, you know, he's, although he's been a couple of weeks since he last run, he's sure to run OK. Good, well, can, good luck for that race, and congratulations on bureaucracy, and we'll see a lot more of you in the spring. Mick, Thank thanks you, very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Graham Kelly with Mick Dittman, and uh, that horse, 
very, very, very promising. We'll have a look at some of the things which will be making uh, headlines on Channel 10 coming soon. The State Bank big game today from uh, the Sydney football ground between Manly and Brisbane. That starts at 3 o'clock this afternoon following today's coverage of the races. On Sunday the 9th, the State Bank big game highlights between Canberra and Penrith. That'll be from 6 o'clock to uh, 7.30 on the 9th. The State Bank Big Game preliminary final will be on Sunday the 16th on uh, Channel 10 as well. Plenty of rugby and the best of the rugby really coming up through the next month or so. The grand final will be on the 23rd of September, live from 2pm to 6pm in the afternoon. Tennis, Commonwealth Bank Queensland Open Tennis Championships start on the 24th of September running through to the end of the month. That's from the Monday to the Sunday. That'll be a big week as well as the Uncle Toby's Australian Indoor Tennis Championships which start on the 1st of October. And of course, later on in the year, the big four days, Spring Racing Carnival at Flemington, Derby Day, Cup Day, Oaks Day and the final day, the Ampole Stakes. Four fantastic days of racing and certainly bureaucracy I'd say we'll see again in that week. Earlier on today we saw uh, Vim win the steeplechase, the first event on the program and uh, he made it four successive victories for Michael Patton over the jumps. Let's have a look at Vim win the steeple. At the last, Walkathon got over it this time, King Kelton didn't jump it too well. Vim goes for the run up on the inside for Mick Patton. Walkathon in front. Vim's finishing strongly on the inside. Vim's got up on the inside to grab the lead from Walkathon with 150 metres to go. Nymphus is running on strongly out by, but Vim broke away. He's going to make it two wins in a row. Vim and Mick Patton draw clear near the post to win by two lengths to Walkathon, third Nymphus. Vim, 6.30 and $1.55. Good uh, price for a last start city winner. That was the horse's ninth victory from 102 starts and the first time he'd put two wins together. Walkathon, 1.30, Nymphus, $1.70. Race number two, the winner highly geared. Can't get at them. Temperate King joining in, followed by Great Sabre, Aroma and Stan Ray. Many chances. 300 metres to go. Flex Breeze in front. Mentats rule second. Here's Temperate King on the outside. Great Sabre ran into a dead end and Stan Ray in Black Opera. Temperate King went up to take the lead from Flex Breeze and in the centre. Highly geared. Flex Breeze, highly geared. Coming hard in the middle. Highly geared's got up. Highly geared's kicked again highly in the middle. Highly geared strongly in the middle Breeze. to get up and Third score for Greek Hall. Eight dollars and two thirty-five. Temperate King got second in the photo over Flex Breeze. Big trifecta. Seven thousand seven hundred and twelve dollars and sixty cents. The Quinella also quite big. Eighty-eight dollars eighty-one twenty for the race to race double. Race number three. Kill Key. Big fighting win in the eighteen hundred meter race. The Fosters handicap. Two fifty meters to go. Big Cottony, a length and a half in front. Kill Key trying to run it down. Then degrees. Vista Boy. Sir Banks out wide. Big Colony is still a neck in front. Kilkey getting to it. Down the outside, Sir Banks. Big Colony fighting on. Kilkey just in front. Sir Banks late down the outside, grabbing it. Sir Banks going to Kilkey. Kilkey in front and one. Kilkey by next to Sir Banks. Nice fighting Colony. win by Kilkey, but Sir Banks shapes as a derby hopeful. 635, 155 for the winner. A dollar for second, 225 for third. Trifecta was $417.50. Only about 13 minutes away now from the Craigley Stakes $300,000 race. We could even see the Melbourne Cup winner in there. We'll take a break and come back with the horses in the mounting yard for the Craigley. Welcome back to Flemington. The Craigley Stakes coming up shortly. This race last year was won by Apollo Run who defeated El Murad and Superimposed and those three horses had a big bearing on the Spring Carnival. I wonder if this year's race will be the same. There is some very, very talented horse flesh in the race and to have a look at some of the runners, here's Peter Donegan and Graham Kelly. Thanks, Dan. Just waiting on the runners to filter into the mounting yard. They're just making their way from the birdcage where you can see a large crowd down there having a look at the runners and they come down this long race at Flemington, uh, the race that was uh, featured so dramatically in the film Farlap, of course, when he entered the mounting yard at the last minute before the 1930 Melbourne Cup. That's where Farlap ran down and came into the mounting yard at the last minute. By golly, Graham, that uh, particular piece of land has seen some great horses walk over it over the years. Yes, it certainly has. And Tullock, Kingston Town, many great horses, as you say. Well, there's going to be uh, another great one joining them here. Uh, in the winner of the Craigley Stakes. At this stage, we don't know which horse that will be, but uh, on the tote at the moment, Citizen is showing round about $2.30 and $1.05 for 50 cents on the Victorian tote. And the other top chance is King's High, round about $2.50 for the win and 80 cents for the place. 
and uh, also in contention number seven Pago Mystery the West Australian horse on four dollars forty and one dollar twenty five numbers ten and twelve well in the betting too and uh, I speak there of course of Kingston Rule and Zabil and now some of the horses are in the mounting out. We've only got about five or six, but uh, as I was saying to Rod Johnson before, just before we do look at these horses, Graham, it's great to see the big crowds coming back to Flemington at this time of the year. Yes, it certainly is, Peter, and, and uh, we have got a very good crowd today, as you mentioned. Very.